Mountain Bike Mania is brought to you by KHS Bicycles, a full line of bicycles sold in 30 countries. Jensen USA, America's number one online retailer of bikes and accessories, ODI, the world leader in grip technology, and Angel Fire Bike Park, the top rated bike park in the Southwest. Welcome to Mountain Bike Mania. I'm Samantha McDonald. We have a special episode in store for you. We're bringing you all the action from the USA Cycling Mountain Bike National Championships here in Mammoth, California. Forget the Pro GRT and Northwest Cup standings. Those points mean nothing in today's winner-take-all race. The fastest woman, pro man, and junior expert down the mountain today earn the right to call themselves national champion. Now let's take a look at the course preview brought to you by Jensen USA. So Mikey, tell us what seating's all about. Well, different from our pro GRTs, which have a qualifying round, seating only dictates the start order for Saturday's race. All of the riders that complete their seating run will get to race for the national championship, as where at a GRT, only the top 80 riders will qualify. Gotcha, sounds good. Sounds like a good race. Let's check out the qualifying segment brought to you by KHS Bicycles. Yeah, it's always a special feeling to kind of be with all the, the fans and kind of friends that I'm used to hanging out with and, uh, yeah, be able to just race at home for a change. All right, here's the start list for the junior experts. Who's on top, Mikey? That uh, looks like Charlie Harrison, our number one seed. Bruce Klein tight behind him with his teammate Andras Simon, Warren Niss, and Jared Hansen around on the top five. Bruce and uh, Charlie have been going back and forth all season long, but here we've got Jacob Jordan from Southridge. He starting very first on the day. What happened to him in qualies, Mikey, do you know? Yeah, he actually had a, a pretty nasty get-off and had to take a ride down to the hospital and get some, uh, oh, some stitches God. in a place that uh, most males would be very weary of anyone with a <laughs> needle. So, uh, so it's good to not only see him back out here, but it looks like having a killer run yeah, right he's, now. Yeah, he's coming back with a vengeance right now. He has. That a little, losing his foot there in that turn, though, might cost him a little bit of exit speed. He's but literally the first split, so we have no idea if he's up or down, but he looks really fast. Judging by where the split is, that's going to be a pretty solid time sending that all the way to flat, <laughs> keeping his feet in through that turn so he can get on the gas. Looking down, something wrong? Or? Looks like he might have thought he might have had a mechanical problem, no, but uh, he's able on the to get on the pedals there. Seems fine, yeah. Looks to be still able to throwing down a huge run. Maybe he was looking down to make sure his stitches were still in place. <laughs> there you go. Diving down into the step down. Last couple corners here. Yep, a few corners, and then we're going to drop into this new section for the year called the elevator shaft. Just a huge, pumicey, loose chute. They just like, carved it out for this race, right? Yeah, new fast time set to beat, though, is 3.36.31. That's going to be a really fast time if our, qual our uh, seating times yesterday were any indication. Yeah, definitely. Well, who's next? This looks like one of the in-cycle top five qualifiers, Jared Hansen. So he's from Corona, where there's no rocks, but uh, he gets to race at Fontana a lot and good training, so let's check him out here. Yeah, the, the elevation change a little bit different, though, between Fontana at a th about 1,000 feet and here at uh, Mammoth, which is just over nine at the base, I believe. Looks like he's getting through the tricky parts all right, though. Yeah, it looks to be holding together a nice smooth line. A pretty tall rider, so always deceptively fast when these bigger guys get on these downhill bikes. Dropping off that rock. Not Different like Jacob. line from Jacob there. Think it's faster? Or uh, just... I think they're about even. Ooh, he's doubling down that oh, section. Hitting that root on the way down. And setting up wide for this here fast, loose, pumicey corner. Almost Keep... looks like he sat up a little yeah, kept... just to make sure he made it through safe. Definitely kept his feet on into the last couple blind shoots, setting up wide and gapping over the start. Yeah, into the inside. Having to reach for that step down, maybe not carrying the exit speed through those pavers, which yeah. can be deceptively slick. So he's very comfortable in the air, but he's definitely flying through the pumice at the bottom. 
Here he is pedaling across the line. Just outside, though. 340. Put him right after Jacob. Good enough for second right now. I think that's just about the same time he ran in seating, so that's track solid. definitely deteriorating oh, through the weekend. Here's your neighbor, Warren, from... Uh, Mid Fremont, Cal. but rides mostly down in Santa Cruz, California. He, Great to see him on a program here with that intense Palmer program. Didn't he win slalom last night? He did. He actually should have uh, some pretty tired legs after some <laughs> tough battles in the dual slalom but. against his teammate Josh Gibb. But uh, one of our smoothest, kind of more relaxed riders on the circuit, but uh, never very, really looks like he's trying that hard. But yeah, his very time's, calculated. His time is definitely not showing that. And he's, wow, he's up. Nice. Up by 1.3 at the start, getting a little buck there on the double drops. <laughs> Jumping to the outside near the tree. Scrubbing down almost. Keeping his feet on still. Trying to find that exact traction point of the tires. Yeah, this pump is very deceptive. The, it's very fun to ride when you slide it around, but uh, when you do slide, you're basically losing speed. So. It's, it's hard to know if your bike's actually going to catch or you're just going to slam into the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's deceptive kitty litter is what a lot of the riders compare it to. So getting really back seat on this elevator wow. shaft shoot. Flying down. Across the line. What's it going to be? New yep. leader. That'll be first. Just about a second up on Jake. Look at so that So Jake tease. having... If the qualifying's right. Jake had about 20 riders between him to sit in that hot seat. So. Yeah, and, he's, and he was still there until uh, Warren. But we've got defending national champion for the 15, 16-year-old category. First year in the junior experts. And yeah, this is Andras Simon, another in-cycle rider. He was wearing the sleeve all weekend, defending that 15, 16-year-old title. but uh, Keeping the socks on, too. Yeah, so. keeping the stars and stripes, though. Getting a little peek of his national champ socks there. So he qualified third, so he has a shot at this uh, in the new age bracket. Oh. He is very hungry. We see very focused in these corners, really just trying to get all the exit. And he's up. Wow. Up by two seconds. That's nuts. On Nis right now. Choosing to jump to the inside Ooh. and catch the little bit of that rut. Just slammed into wow, it. Wow, all the way past the landing <laughs> on that wooden table, still scrubbing out the next jump. You think it'd be hard for him to carry momentum? He looks so small. He is one of the smaller riders, but he may, uh, may be able to float just on top of the pumice and not sink in a lot, being that lighter weight. We'll have to see how it uh, factors into some of our larger, stronger riders later in the race. Yeah. So into the elevator shaft, pumping the little bit of a turn, flying and letting there. it go down at the bottom. That's the scariest thing to watch. Wow, That's 333, two seconds Ooh. up on his teammate Warren Niss. Intense teammate, excuse me, different programs, both on intense M16s. That's nuts. Way to go. Well, here's our top qualifier, Charlie Harrison. Out of North Orange County, he's uh, he's kind of the danger man, the man to beat this weekend. It is his title to lose. He's been pretty pinned all weekend. Wow, choosing a different that. exit line there, gapping it to a rock landing. Very risky if he comes up short at yeah, all. Yeah, he has to keep his speed right through that. Otherwise, boom. Choosing the outside there on the drop line. Let's check out the split. And he's just barely up right now. He's up on Brusa, but Bruce hasn't shown up, so he must have had an accident yeah, somewhere Bruce down. Yeah, setting our fastest split, but must have had an accident in the lower part of the course. Hopefully, he's all right and rolling it down yeah charlie's staying really low off these jumps just to barely make it to backside still really harsh compressions though we saw that bike fully bottoming out on the landing but charlie back on the gas he wants it he He's, is pedaling harder than we've seen from anyone today he feels very comfortable here right yeah i think he gets a lot of training time along along with our southern california riders able to jump up here for the weekend maybe getting a little bit of a home court advantage even though this track different than... Whoa! That's Sorry nuts. to stop me right there. Five seconds. Our first rider to go under the 330 mark. 328.80. That's, Charlie really commanding lead. That is nuts. So Charlie taking down the win. There's our ODI leaderboard. Andros. Top 10. Right behind him in second. Warren Niss, the slalom champ in third. And Jacob Jordan and Jared Hansen rounding out the top five. Jake's got to be real happy with that. Here's our women's start list. Number one seed, no surprise there, Jill Kintner. But a few names we're not used to seeing up in the top ranks. Amanda Batty, Becky Gardner, and Jacqueline Thomas. The first we're seeing is Becky Gardner. So she's from New York but has been training at Fort Lewis College. But I hear something happened with her bike in, in qualifying. Is that yeah, right, Yeah, she actually had a bit of a rough day yesterday. A lot of our riders did. But Becky having a real rough one and actually breaking her downhill frame in her qualifying run. Oh, gosh. Luckily, her older brother, uh, Ryan, was there to race the Enduro this weekend. He was able to... Uh, loan her here his trail bike frame so that's actually a six inch travel kona trail bike with with the uh, becky's downhill fork bolted to the front yeah she looks like she doesn't really 
know what it's trying to do there. Yeah, not too definitely well. not going to be comfortable on this sort of track, and definitely not the bike of choice. But, but wow, she's up still, on still up. the split right now, a full 16 seconds. That's nuts. On the, our current women's leader, Kim Godfrey. Yeah, but Kim took a little while to get down. I think she had a crash right after the split somewhere. Yeah, Kim had a big get off in both qualifying and her finals, so she's uh, she's just happy to make it down safe. But Becky putting down a solid run on the borrowed frame. We see her really just trying to navigate this course safely rather than really attacking it right now. She's got a few more corners to go, and then she's going to drop into our elevator shaft. Here she is across the line. Let's check it out. Oh, wow. I think she got Amanda Batty by point four. Wow, that is close. That's a very close run right there. Becky choosing to use some of our go-around options as well that we saw earlier. So who have we got here? Jacqueline Thomas? This looks like another Colorado girl. Jacqueline Thomas with a great showing yesterday in the dual slalom, putting up a nice battle with Jill and taking home the silver. Nice. We'll see her. She's actually taking the direct bullet rock garden line. Heck yeah. And fighting her way through Woo! it. Wow, taking the risky drop exit line. Almost biting her, but making it through safe. Ton of props. That was good looking. So here she is through another one of our rock sections. Really tough going from light to dark there in the trees. You, do you think you should use uh, tinted goggles or clear? A lot of riders choosing to use a tint here just because it is so bright and white. And she's Wow, she's up at split she's number up. two on Becky by about four, four seconds. seconds huh? That's, Floating down there, though, that looks good. That may be partly due to her more direct line choice taking those... The more rocks. risky but straighter lines on this Mammoth Mountain race yeah, she, course. She kept her speed to the rocks pretty well. And it's it, like you said, it's a lot more straight. Yeah, the riders, uh, I'm sorry, not the riders, but the actual course builders here choosing to uh, make a lot of different options both on the track and then with some of the, the what we call go around lines for the riskier sections. Oh, wow. She, she is she's though, well under the line. That. 419. Wow. Only four seconds up at the split, and she was able to add another 15 seconds, what? it looks like. No, I think that's 25 seconds. Total, or something. yeah, so she was able I to add count. a whole bunch of time in the lower section, but here is the woman to beat. It is her championship to lose. Jill Kintner, two-time reigning slalom champion out and defending downhill champ. Checking out those rocks. Having a little bit of a cautious run through there. Wow, a nolly. <laughs> Clean exit, though, eh? A nolly off the finish there. That's a very <laughs> risky move, but making it through clean if her front wheel stopped just a fraction of a second more she may have uh, had a dirt sample <laughs> well here she goes keeping her speed through yeah, the uh, choosing that wide exit line we saw some of our juniors able to hold some more speed and she's wow she's up that's a 13 that is seconds. a chunk of change right there almost 14 seconds Pretty. in the top part of this course with only a little bit more than a minute left minute and a half left for our top riders yeah, as you can see her sneaking pedals everywhere too yeah, this, this lower part of the track definitely going to suit Jill a little bit more from her. She uh, she comes from a long-time BMX racing background, switching over to mountain bikes, being a few-time four-cross world champion, and then uh, actually putting in her bid to the Beijing Olympics with a bronze medal a few years ago in BMX. Well, so. Let's check out the time. Wow, four, four three, oh, three. Wow, that actually shows that Jackie Thomas had a very fast lower split, not able to really gain much time on Jill. So, but that that was an all Jill show right there. You can see 16 seconds. Congrats to her and Becky coming away with medals here at our Pro Women's National Championship. But here we go with our athlete of the week. Let's check it out. Brought to you by Angel Fire Bike Park. Aaron Gwynn is at the top of his game. The six-time national downhill champion currently sits in second place in the UCI World Cup standings, but he has on his mind an even bigger goal. Um, I have won the overall World Cup title a couple times now. Um, I've never won world champs, so that's a big goal of mine. Well, what goes through your mind before you start a race? I think for me, it's usually not much going through my mind. I think. Um, we do a lot of work all the way from you know six months in the off season to uh, when you get to a race all the way from course walk to all your practice runs. Um, I do a lot of work up front, you know, early in my practice runs, and uh, so by the time the race run comes, I already have my game plan. I've been through it a ton of times, and it's more just uh, kind of putting the the puzzle pieces together, as I'll call it, <laughs> and uh, getting down the run, trying not to make any mistakes. But usually, you know, by the time race day comes, you've done all your work. Now it's just uh, kind of drop in, give it your best effort, and just see how it goes. So you're very cool and collected. Yeah, I mean, you always get nervous. Everybody gets nervous. But what we're doing is, you know, there's an element to risk in it, and you want to win. So you always get those little nervous feelings. But, uh, you know, we've been doing it a while, so it's kind of just uh, 
kind of race your routine. What would you do without mountain biking? Um, I don't know, hard to say. It's, uh, it's a big if, I guess, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, probably something close to the sport, um, whether it was mountain biking or motocross. I guess my passion is uh, kind of two-wheeled off-road racing and um, the fitness and kind of everything that goes along with it. Um, so yeah, probably something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, when I look back at my past, I've kind of done a little bit of a little bit of everything. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Here we are with our pro men start list presented by ODI. The man, we just saw on top, Aaron Gwynn, followed by Logan Bingley. Lucas Shaw, another name we're not used to seeing up top, Mikey Silvestri, and here's a new rider into that top spot. He's just been getting back, getting his footing back for the year. Uh, he's, he said he's finally feeling back up to speed where he was when he was a junior. Jason Schroeder, that is. Yeah, Schroeder out of San Diego, California, um, getting a little bit of local advantage up here the last couple weekends, training and getting used to this mammoth soil. He's been on the circuit for quite a while, right? He has. He's a longtime junior rider, longtime Fontana rider, and wow, huge exit <laughs> speed through that outside. He's here at split number one, and he's up. Up, yeah. Up by almost two seconds on our current leader, Zach Graveson. We see a lot of people take that outside line, but kind of get caught up in the pumice like this turn, too. Throwing a foot out, just keeping the rudder down to make sure he can hold his speed through there. Yeah, and he's clipped in, so it's kind of ballsy for him to take his foot off. Yeah, having to struggle to get back in and get back on the gas. That's a huge Tucking part of through this section, though, not really sneaking in the pedals like we saw from Jill Kintner and some of our faster junior riders as well. Just a few more turns, and then he'll drop into our elevator shaft. Here he comes. First pro wow, getting a little airing buff. over that little <laughs> bit of a cross ride. Think that was on purpose, Mike? I think that was pure reactive riding into the lead, though. Wow. New fast time. 3.30. Yeah, that's nice. Right behind us. Not too many, but partner definitely ride a lot. Luca Cometti having a flat in seating, so we saw him very early. Come first down. So who is this here? Dimitri? This is Dimitri Trianfalu, but uh, the name, I got the pronunciation from him on site, but I think I'm just going to nickname him the Alphabet Kid from now on, because there's <laughs> way too many letters in that name to oh, pronounce. Getting a little buck there. Wow, getting away with something there a little bit. This uh, this mammoth dirt, very likely to come up and bite you if you it's, land with your tire that far sideways. It's so hard to stop. The bike will just slam on its side if you don't keep your momentum. Yeah, we, we like to call it the illusion of traction here at Mammoth. It's He's down at split number one, but gapping out Dang. those those triple drops. Bouncing like, is he a big dude? He's uh, he's not a small rider, but he's definitely not the biggest we have on the circuit. Yeah. Well, so he's uh, he rides with a lot of authority, though. We're seeing it, just manhandling his bike around. We got Big Rig Higgerson at six foot seven. So. Yeah, I think Hig is probably one of our tallest on the circuit, but uh, Dimitri right there around the five eleven six foot mark, I think. But riding with pure command on his GT right there. He knows exactly where he wants it to go. A few little gap lines in there. It looks like the the top of that entrance getting a little more cross rutted. Not going to be enough to unseat Schroeder, though. 3.31.49. Still a great time for the Alphabet Kid, Dimitri. Well, nice. Here we go. Defending national overall champion, Kevin Aiello. Yeah, he's uh, he is fighting for that coveted Stars and Stripes jersey that has eluded him in his pro career. He's been the pro GRT champ, but has yet to win this one day race for all the marbles. So and of course with Gwynny here, that's not gonna be easy. Definitely not our number one but seed, he, Aaron Gwynn. He looks the like man he's to on beat. A, a mission here. He is really, really riding with a fire and it's good to see him not only riding with speed and aggressiveness, but uh just to be back on his bike at all. Wow, he's up at the split too. One point two. Yeah, it's it again. Good to see him back riding aggressive and uh, and just riding it all after that horrific crash at Pro GRT number one at Port Angeles. Yep, he must be really familiar with Mammoth too. I mean, he won the slalom here a couple of years ago, and I mean it's pretty close to home. I don't know how often he trains here, but I you think say just so, the Michael? just the loose style of riding that you have to have for this Mammoth pumice and loose dirt really kind of suits Kevin's style. Yep. He's he's really known for just letting it run wild and and uh, really hang off the back of the bike and let it slide around corners. And we're going to yeah. see it right here in this last turn. Let's check it out. He keeps that split time. Yep. Wow, does. new fastest time of the day. Evan showing that he is a force to be reckoned with here. Two seconds on Schroeder with, uh, what is it, six, five to go, seven? I believe he's seventh qualifier. So this is our number six qualifier. Dakota Norton out of Michigan, which I'm sure this altitude is definitely not <laughs> something he's used to. No, we're at eight, like 10,000 feet at the start. 
Maybe 11. Really battling oh. hard to keep that bike through the rocks. And he's dropping old, the rear wheel. He's an old BMX kid, and, and even before that, Moto, so he's definitely comfortable on two wheels. Definitely comfortable on two wheels. Probably not as comfortable with this style of loose, the rocky stuff. terrain. Not something you're going to find out in Michigan. Nope. And it's down at the split a little bit right now. Still, I think Schroeder holding that top split time. Yeah, well, Ke I mean, we saw Kevin. Kevin was no, able Kevin. to pull back some time at the bottom, though, right, Ross? That's for sure. We got, I don't know, Dakota looks pretty pretty aggressive here, but Kevin really wanted it badly, you could tell. There we go again, dropping that rear wheel, bunny hopping over sections, kind of showing the BMX style like they do through the rhythms on BMX national tracks, putting the rear <laughs> wheel down just to uh, gain some more Yeah, keep it rolling. Speed. Oh. And the new fast time. No, he's just behind Kevin. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, I misread a 28. It's about 1.7 or 8 back. That's a good result for a flatlander. Who that we got is. here, Mikey? Here's what we're going to closely call the local favorite, Mikey Silvestri. Good to see him back out on the national circuit, getting help out from uh, Cam Zink on that YT Industries program. Wow, look at the speed through that the Rock Garden, Ross. just straight and fast. He is showing it no regard for traction on this course just letting it run wild i mean he's he's been racing here for a bunch of years hasn't like 10 years uh well more in, in tahoe and at north star is kind of okay. his home mountain and wow he's still down at the split over schroeder schroeder had an amazing top section he, mikey definitely looks fast and if anything suits his style it might be the bottom half so hang on we'll yeah, wow, sending that all the way past the landing <laughs> scrubbing that jump super slow keeping it low and fast pedals. Oh, little power manual. So <laughs> much style out of Silvestri. He knows how to get some speed out of everywhere. Wow, Man. so fast through the pavers that he barely had to lift off the step down. And his entrance speed faster than oh anybody we've God. seen so far. This could be a new fast time across the line. I think it is. Oh, my God. 3.23, five, five seconds. seconds into Kevin Aiello. That is nuts. That is great to see out of Mikey. Look at him over the rocks. Just so pinned. Luca Shaw. All the way from the East Coast. Yep, our number three qualifier, number two overall right now on the World Cup circuit, American wise. That's pretty, and this is his first year pro. Yeah, so. this is his first year out of the junior category, so he's definitely showing he is a force to reckon with. Heck yeah. Super smooth, very calculated rider. We never see him try and take too many risks, or at least the risks he takes doesn't look like he's no, uh, he's, he's even so trying too hard. He's so dialed. It's just that flick right there into the setup of that corner, being able to hold so much speed, and he's, he's wow, up. he's up. A full 1.5 up at split number one. On Kevin Ayala. Look at that. Outside into the tree gap. Nice setup line there. Still Definitely. throwing a foot out, though. Maybe not holding it as tight as he wanted to. And the more straight these riders can make these turns, the, the tenths of a second they'll shave off by the end of the run. And he's been riding a little bit of moto. Wow, sending that blind gap off of the step down. Into the bush, almost. Yeah, that's a very blind, very rough landing, where if you yeah. miscalculate, you can uh, end your day real quickly. Off of these pavers and into the elevator shaft. Very smooth, very calculated, just like we're used to seeing out of Luca. His time. Oh, just one. 324, so Mikey having a blistering lower Bottom section. Down. Being almost two seconds down, Luca's still not able to make up that gap. So here we've got second qualifier, Logan Bingley. Logan, wow, <laughs> sending that gap. That gap actually nicknamed the Widowmaker is... by riders. It actually claimed quite a few of our, our pro men and junior field build throughout the weekend. Large. My Logan gosh. making short word of it go, sending it all the way to flat. He's definitely airing out a lot of sections. Doesn't really like to let the bike roll then, huh, Mikey? I think he's just using uh, using his knowledge of, uh, of being on the smaller frame. He actually chose to ride his trail bike frame with a downhill fork and knowing that it's it's not going to track quite as well as the big downhill bikes. But so he rather can pedal than, well, right? Rather than fight it, he'll jump over the rough sections and then pedal where he can. And Showing that in the top part of this course, being more technical, he's actually two and a half seconds down at the split. But if anything's going to suit him, it's going to be this lower section here where he can get back on the gas early. Yeah, and pump his way over this fun stuff. Nice little rhythm section. Choosing to tuck there. Actually getting a little wild in this next bit. In yeah. our qualifying, let's see how he does now. Oh, seems S fine. Same line, but nice and smooth this time. Through the pavers and on the step down. Just a few more corners and a little pedal, and he's going to drop into our elevator shaft. He seems to be holding good speed. But Very consistent. Only Logan. time will tell. Probably in a bid for our overall this year. And not going to be enough. He's just uh, just behind his teammate by only a hundredth of a second. That's that's going to be a tough pill to swallow into fourth right now. Yeah, after qualifying second, I'm sure he's going to 
Dude, and here is our athlete of the week and the danger man. Aaron Gwynn off the way from SoCal. Making the drive just to claim that national championship title. Let's see if he can do it. Is this two years in a row? This would be two years in a row and probably I think his third or fourth national title. Kind of bursting on the scene and really commanding that top American spot. Mm -hmm. So just the speed that he's able to attack these courses at almost looks like he's not trying as hard. But we yeah, see like his bike actually working very hard. He's just, not airing it out. He's not working too hard. He's, but he's definitely going really fast. Wow, so much speed through that corner. Still, let's look at our split time. Luca Shaw. What? Whoa, almost three <laughs> seconds up at split number one. That's nuts. We did see an amazing lower section, though, from Mikey Silvestri. Let's see if Aaron can keep it on pace with these loose corners. Aaron clipped in, Mikey on flat, so the benefit really going to Aaron right now being able to pedal, but we see him coasting a lot yeah. of this. Saving energy, I mean, we're at 10,000 feet, he's... Definitely true, choosing a different line, bunny hopping over into that section, into the straighten step it out. He's gonna drop into our elevator shaft here in a minute. There he is, into view. Oh, wow, bouncing. rear wheel kicking up, right. airing over the corner, and so much speed through the bottom of this track. Across <laughs> the line. Go. Is that 320? 320. 320.52. No way. Beating his seat time by just over a second. That's and your new national champion. Well, not new, but repeat from last year, Aaron Quinn commanding. Wow, just by about three full seconds. Great to see, though, Mikey Silvestri having a breakthrough ride in second. Lucas Shaw holding it down to clean the number three spot. KHS boys rounding out your top five. And what was your lesson from today? Um, I think today the challenge was uh, obviously the altitude here. Um, I live pretty much at sea level down in SoCal, so it's uh, it's pretty high up here. So that was tough. And then uh, just the conditions, it's really dry and loose. And, uh, you know, so the track kind of changes every lap. So it definitely was tough to uh, put down a smooth kind of full run here. So just happy to uh, put one down. And, uh, yeah, the time held up, so I'm happy. What was your first thought when you crossed the finish line and you found out you were first? I don't know. It was so good. Like, <laughs> such a great feeling, and everyone just came and ran out, and it was awesome. Favorite part of the course? Honestly, this last shoot was the best. Uh, yeah. Really liking the variations on the course this year. It was fun. Yeah, bud. Silver medalist Michael Silvestri and the bronze medalist, Top Three Ladies, U.S. National Downhill Champion, Children. Here's the future of the pro field right there. All the winners of today's races, Aaron Gwynn, Charlie Harrison, and Jill Kinder, were expected to win. But the second place finishers in the junior expert category, Andras Simon, and in the pro men's category, Mikey Silvestri, were not predicted. That's the beauty of mountain biking. Now the riders will take the cross country trip to Snowshoe, West Virginia, to compete in the fourth race in the Pro GRT series. Tune in next week for coverage. For all our crew at Mountain Bike Mania and our sponsors, Jensen USA, ODI Grips, KHS Bicycles, and Angel Fire Bike Park, I'm I'm Samantha McDonald. Mountain Bike Mania has been brought to you by KHS Bicycles, a full line of bicycles sold in 30 countries. Jensen USA, America's number one online retailer of bikes and accessories, ODI, the world leader in grip technology, and Angel Fire Bike Park, the top rated bike park in the Southwest.